Before we get into designing a logo for your band, we're going to take a little walk through the history of music and look at what makes some other band logos iconic. Alright, so let's jump right in. I have a folder here with about 40 different band logos, and we're going to look through them and see if we can find a couple of common themes, a couple of things that uh, each one of the designers did that seem to work in the music space for building logos. So let's get started. All right, so first we have Aerosmith, and uh, this is a pretty easily recognizable image. In the center we have uh, the A in a circle, kind of reminds me a little bit of Captain America, and then we have the wings. A couple things we can take away from this. It's only two colors. It's got the word Aerosmith in there, it also has an A in a circle, so simple shapes, and then wings that are extremely, well, simple. Uh, all they are is the outline of wings, so it's not, uh, we don't have each feather drawn, it's not very intricate. Let's keep going. Bad religion. Um, Alright, so it's obvious that we have a cross, and it's obvious that bad religion is saying they, there, there are no crosses allowed here, so it, it is kind of a pictorial representation of the name bad religion. And again, uh, this one's three different colors, but uh, very simple shapes, easily recognizable what this is, and uh, kind of easy to associate this with the band. Black flag, hey, here's one without a circle. This is extremely simple. This is obviously a stylized flag blowing in the wind. This is real easy to make out. Uh, and again, let's drag this over here. Even if you take out the words black flag, it's still pretty apparent what you have here. Let's just go to fill and use white. Okay. You can still tell pretty easily that that, that is, in fact, a stylized black flag flowing in the wind. All right. Dead Kennedys, another extremely recognizable. You've got the lines forming the letters DK in the circle there. Again, only a few colors. Very simple. Represents the band name. Uh, let's move on. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Now, this one, this one's really interesting because even though they don't have a circle in the logo itself, uh, the formation of the letters gives us that circle. So we jump over here, kind of show you what I mean. Pretty easy to see that we have a circle here in the Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Oops, I just, that's the wrong one. The cool part is, again, that their band name is represented here. So simple shapes representing the band name and uh, even though this one is shaded in, you know, we have a gradient of purple going down to white at the bottom, you can easily make this logo um, two colors. And it's gonna be a little more difficult with the tolerance at 15, so we'll turn it up to 35. All right, let's try this. And you can see it, it doesn't take anything away at all when we make the gradient here one straight color. So the theme seems to be simple shapes, representative of the band, and a good silhouette, which basically means that the image is distinct no matter what color you put it in. All right, let's keep going. Let me just enlarge this here. Grateful Dead. More simple shapes, easily recognizable. We've got the skull. We could put any colors we wanted into this area and you'd still get the general idea. So this follows everything we've said so far. Guns and Roses. This is the first one that we've come across that's really intricate. We have fully rendered roses, fully rendered pistols here. Uh, Guns and Roses, again in its own font, but also distinctly representative of the band. And if you outlined the pistols instead of rendering everything out you'd still be able to tell what this is that would give you a way to print this logo in mostly just silhouette him another easily recognizable symbol there that they've turned into a heart here at the top we also have this circle shape in the background here in the uh the light pattern dancing around in the background iron maiden all right this is one that doesn't necessarily follow the rules that we have set forth but it's easily recognizable it uses the band name, and see, as you can see, the, it even holds up at a distance. It features the band name prominently because that's the only thing here, and also it uses a very distinct custom font. And finally, we could print the words Iron Maiden in basically any color, and it wouldn't matter. You would know that it still says Iron Maiden. 
Kiss, one of the fantastic logos in music history right here. Again, the same as Iron Maiden, they have their own distinct font. Uh, this one is very representative of the band, especially with the Kiss letters on fire, because their stage show is kind of out of control. Fire everywhere. There's only one band, I would think, that, uh, that outdoes Kiss and Pyrotechnics. So very appropriate that they're on fire here. Easily, easily recognizable. Independent of color. Let's keep going. Prince. Okay, so even though this particular version of this symbol is made up of tiny little dots, uh, this one's got a good silhouette. Here, we'll shrink it down here so you can kind of get a better idea. It's got a good silhouette, and the only sort of intricate part is this little tail here, but other than that, it's all simple shapes. So, good simple shapes, good silhouette. And if you name yourself this symbol, nobody will be able to pronounce it. The Public Enemy logo here. Simple shapes, independent of color, representative of the band. That seems to be basically what we're dealing with here in all of these band logos. Again, circular configuration, This, in this case taking the form of a sniper rifle scope. And yeah, let's move on. Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, I'm not sure how this one relates to the band, but alright, cool, cool. Maybe they have a lot of kids. Radiohead. The Ramones. One thing to keep in mind with some of these logos, and this Rolling Stones logo is the perfect example. This logo wasn't created until after the band had already been established. So they had had several breakout albums already, and people knew who the Rolling Stones were. So then, as a graphic artist, you're going to take almost a different approach than if you get a band that's just starting. And part of that reason is because now there's already a fan expectation for how the band is represented. So not only do you have the band's personality to work in there, but you have the image of the band as perceived by the public. But as you can see, it still follows a couple of the same basic premises, which are, it's very simple. It's independent of color. This red we could change to any color, even though it makes more sense as red in this particular case. So maybe it's not independent of color. Maybe I'm lying about that part. But the bottom line is, if we printed the red as black and we just didn't have the black, you'd still be able to tell that this is the Rolling Stones logo. All right, the Sex Pistols font is another thing that's kind of like Iron Maiden, but it's a little bit, there's a little bit more involved there. The Sex Pistols being a punk band, uh, it, punk mentality is very do-it-yourself. So this logo spells out the Sex Pistols band name and it looks like they've cut it out of like newspaper clippings. Very do-it-yourself. It looks like somebody just spent some time, you know, building this. So in addition to being uh, independent of color, in addition to having the band name representative and being distinct, this one fits the genre that they're involved in. The strokes, we're back to the circle, we're back to a uh, very distinct one color style, and again, even though this one's kind of chromed out, you can chrome out any of these logos, make them look like they're shiny, but if we printed this in just straight white, everybody would still be able to know what it is. The Who, fantastic, bunch of simple shapes, incorporating their name, a little bit of a custom logo there. <laughs> tool. And last we come to Wu-Tang. Typically the Wu-Tang logo is just this W here, uh, which is also very recognizable and representative of the band. So to quickly recap everything that we've been looking at uh, in order to work on our own design, for the most part everything we've looked at has a good silhouette. They use very simple shapes. Most of them just use circles and put everything in a nice neat little circle which immediately draws your attention right to the center of what you're looking at. So principles of good design. So we'll talk about that. The second thing that all of these logos have is this. Multifunctionality. And what I mean by that is all of them can easily stand on their own. You can put it on a shirt, you can put it on a hat, you can put it on a poster. Everything, everywhere that you're gonna put this, it's not reliant upon the material and the medium that you're using. And that kind of goes in with the good design aspect uh, in, that, in that the designers have put these together knowing that the band is going to need to use this on a lot of different things. Every one of these logos is also distinct. Every one of these logos is easily recognizable, whether you see it from a distance or you alter it slightly like we did with the Emerson, Lake, and Palmer logo. Or in the case of the last logo that we looked at, which was with the Wu-Tang Clan, you can actually change the logo. As you can see here, the logo's been flipped on its side, and in addition to that, it's been altered to make it look like a G. If you look here, you can see very distinctly there's a G here. 
because this is for one of the individual members of the Wu-Tang Clan, not the entire band, as you can see down here. As you can see down here, this is a special Pro Tools bundle that, uh, that he produced. So it's still very recognizable. You know that that's the Wu-Tang logo. So very distinct. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is that it has to represent your band. So these are the four things that we're going to look at going forward. Good design principles, multifunctionality, distinct, and representative of your band. Your band personality absolutely needs to show through. And we have to talk a little bit about the rules of the genre that you're in. That's going to be all for now. Hey everyone, one quick note before you go. This video that you just watched is part of a larger course on how to promote your band. So if you liked what you saw, or if you're just ready for the next step, then click the link right here in the description, and that will take you to the course page overview where you'll see every lesson in the series, and you can pick and choose which ones you want to watch. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and if you have any questions, send them to requestsitmahalo.com. Thanks for watching. Today in this video, I'm going to take you a little closer to gamut. Yeah. This close. Oh.